I have something pretty cool. I've got my first steel, actual steel OEM saw, and I wanna know your opinion about it. Due to straight gas, was $353. This was not straight gas, I believe. Hey everybody, Joe the Okie Woodsman here. All right, let's take a look here. I just acquired this saw, and the story is on it, it is seized up. This saw is seized up due to straight gas, which in my opinion is an easy thing to do. Dealer quoted right here. Let's take a look at the itemizations. Cylinder and piston, $183, $10 for a new bearing. Shop supplies for 10 bucks. And it looks like 110 minutes of labor, $137.50. Total quote was $353.09. The owner of this saw decided that it would be best not to repair it there at the steel dealership and and he gave it to the channel one thing i'm super excited about is essentially a uh, almost a brand new looking steel that's a 25 inch bar uh, a uh, full chisel chain with quite a bit of life in it left uh, it's dull it needs to be sharpened but anyway here we go this is a it is a 390. it has been straight gassed like i said you cannot even, uh, it's completely seized. I mean, you cannot, it's, it's, it's stuck. Anyway, regardless, short of the cylinder being toast, it appears to be in pretty good shape. I have checked, it looks like online, I'm able to purchase an aftermarket, basically a whole new um, assembled engine, a new crank, of course, all aftermarket, um, basically, I pop it in there. It looks like somewhere between, let's say, $60 and $100. Does anybody have any experience with those? Of course, the purists are going to say, don't mess with the Chinese junk. As you can see, I've got one of those right there. And I see a potential to resurrect a saw like this at an affordable price. Whereas, you know, I don't know if I'd be willing to spend $200 on OEM parts on this, right? I'll, I'll share my, my thought process. If there was one of these running for sale on Facebook Marketplace, if someone offered it to me for $200, would I buy it? I'm not interested in a farm and ranch saw like this, plastic case saw, okay? Um, it's a 65 cc if I recall correctly, about 65 cc's. I've got other saws that are more powerful than this and lighter, however, if someone offered it to me for $100, I might be interested, especially with this bar and chain. I'd pay $100 for it, but let's just say powerhead only. If this was a good confirmed running 390 for 100 bucks, would I buy it? In my position right now, probably not, but I wouldn't recommend against it necessarily if you wanted something like this. So repairing this with aftermarket non-OEM parts for somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks, may very well be worth it. What I'm thinking is this, I have two young boys, as many of you know, and I would like to teach them some mechanical things. I, I want them to be able to work on, on, uh, on engines. And this would be a good way to just kind of get started, take it apart, put a new engine in it, put a new block essentially, and, uh, and get it running. It'd be something kind of neat. Now, I also do have a secondary saw that needs some work as well. This one's a little bit of a different story. Let me remove the steel off the bench here. What do you guys think about this? Tell me. I don't know if I've ever showed this on the channel. This one's in need of some parts here. This is a 435. I've had it for a few months here. Um, it does have compression. It's low compression. It is missing the muffler, unfortunately. The person that gave it to me. Uh, did not have that. Let's see if I can get some light in there. Pretty hard to see. This was not straight gassed. I believe this is either going to be like an air leak type situation or running it dull. That's my guess. Uh, this was a friend of mine. Uh, he was cutting up a huge tree, or it could have just gotten hot. Okay. He was cutting up a massive tree, took it into a dealership. A repair shop and basically he decided to not repair this one. It's funny both of these people 
actually both of these saws right here, this one and this one, the saws that they chose to purchase instead of repairing these were both Echo CS590 Timberwolf. But anyway, this saw right here uh, is complete minus the muffler. And also sadly, I had it in the back of the truck and it wasn't secured very well, so this broke as well. So now I'm looking at a piston cylinder, potentially a piston and a cylinder, a new brake and a muffler, man getting to be a little bit expensive there for even aftermarket stuff 100 bucks tell me what do you think if this is worth doing as a project as well again not that i necessarily want or need this saw working but again it'd be a fun project to do with my boys and they're also getting older too might be a good good thing to get them started as they get older learning how to cut my boys both really are excited about this saw in particular actually they're quite excited about that saw too they're also very excited about that saw too. Just the prospect of it, they're quite excited about. So again, let me know what you think about this saw as well. I know that's not a professional saw, but I'm certainly not opposed to, oh yeah, and if this has an air leak, let's let's revisit that. If this has something else wrong, it, it probably needs a rebuild of some sort. Uh, it would be a bummer to put it back together and and, uh, and it had something else wrong with it, and then I lose another piston and cylinder. Let me know what you think on that. Let me show you what else I received with that 390. All right. Have you noticed that all my stuff looks cockeyed? It's because, <laughs> because none of my ground is flat. <laughs> so believe it or not, my camera's level. It's on a gimbal right here, and <laughs> this is the position my truck's parked in. The uh, previous owner also gave me the case here. I'm not generally someone to use something like this. That saw certainly can fit in here because this is a large case. It's funny, Steel sells these cases for their little saws and their big saws. It's basically one case. This saw will actually certainly take that up. I've got a 20 inch bar in there as well. No chain for it currently. He thinks he might have that. Uh, that bar is pretty worn. It's got a, a burr like I've never felt on the rail but I'll file it off and see if it's something that is salvageable. So yes, got this one as well, which is pretty cool. Got the, the sheath, got the, um, got the one that came with this, and then also on top of it, the other one, which is nice on that 25 inch bar as well. There is another tool that I have that um, I think I might have mentioned, but I've never shown it on the channel. I have a, basically a brand new Husqvarna backpack blower. It's one from Lowe's. Uh, that was also straight gassed. So everything on that, it has probably less than an hour on it. And the, uh, the previous owner straight gassed it and gave it to me because uh, they've replaced it already. Again, the quote was more than they were willing to spend on fixing it. So um, I've also got that. Um, another thing that I'm wanting to do here, guys, is I am needing desperately to expand my shed. So I've been removing trees on the outside here, and the reason why is I, I, I intend on doubling the size of this shed, because uh, I need to. I've got a bunch of stuff in storage that I could get out of storage, um, plus use up. There's actually a lot of construction materials in there, so I'm paying monthly to store construction materials that... Otherwise, um, I could utilize for this. That's one thing that um, I have coming up, hopefully. I wanna do that. Uh, one of the things that's stopping me is I, I have a big white oak out here. Um, I'm gonna, I wanna climb it, and I do not have a top handle saw. I really wanna get one of those little echo saws because I, 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 I really should have a top handle. Um, but this tree right here, I'm probably gonna, I'll, I'll, I'll probably climb this thing because I don't want to tear up the shed and kind of just top this thing out, limit as I go up. And I do not want to do it with a rear handled saw. I've got all this stuff that is just getting obliterated out here. Um, if I build this out, I'm gonna basically build this out flat, be another eight by 16 unit. And um, if I do that, the floor will be about up here. It'll be pretty pretty darn, darn high. I'll be able to use it for storage to get some of my um, stuff that I don't need in a shed out of the weather. So that'll be a nice as well. I'm gonna do another shed roof coming off this way. I'll leave a little bit of a, a flat right there probably and then and then have another uh, slope here because uh, that wall's about 10 foot tall there. I'll probably uh, uh, maybe come like a foot and a half down and then slope it off this way and build it out. Put a door where my workbench is on the inside and uh, and, and get, get me some more uh, real estate inside of that shed. 
So with that being said, I would certainly appreciate any advice, comments, um, anything like that on the upcoming tasks. Um, I also do need to get on that, uh, that tree house for the boys. I need to, I need to keep going on that as well. So, uh, got, got to get that started on them. They've, uh, kind of, they probably haven't forgotten about it. Um, but they haven't been bothering me on it. And, uh, I want to get that started or not get started. We've already got a great start. I want to get that going for them. So that way, uh, that way they can make use of it. So Okie Woodsman here. Thank you for watching the video. You have a good one and I'll see you on the next one.